What's up, Jake Tube? This is Jake Marshan coming to you guys again, and I'm going to address a concern that I've noticed in a lot of my tire videos. Uh, if you haven't watched any of them, I like to do reviews on tires and let you know how I think they are. And there's uh, questions that pop up a lot of times, and one that seems to be persisting that basically warrants another video is, what PSI should you put your tires at? So this could be something that affects people who've been driving like me for decades, or also could affect people who are new drivers and maybe just got a vehicle and now rather than hopping in their parents or their friend's vehicle, now they have to be concerned with things like maintenance and uh, correct wear and correct usage of vehicles, specifically the tires. But there's several schools of thought, one of which is correct. And I'll tell you what I did first. What I used to do when I bought tires, I would look on the sidewall of the tire and if you look really closely, you can see on the tire, it'll tell you a max PSI. Well, somebody like me, you know, I hear, I heard somewhere through the grapevine a long time ago that if you put more pressure in your tires, it's more fuel efficient. If you put less pressure in your tires, the ride comfort's a lot better. So me, not caring much about ride comfort, I would always just fill them up to whatever the tire said. Um, now this has been different for several of my vehicles. I've driven heavy duty F-350 diesels that had 80 or 88 PSI heavy truck tires on them. I've driven cars like a Ford Fusion or Lexus. Um, I have an SUV now and it uses just standard car tires, but historically I've always just filled them up to the max PSI on the tire. But I've since learned and I'm gonna show you why that's probably not the best thing to do. And it actually has to do with what is the recommended tire pressure to keep on your vehicle as stated by the factory. So you may not know this, but they actually give you a little a little tag, a little label on the inside of your door panel that tells you what PSI your tires should be. And like I said, I can't get into the calculations, but they've calculated this correctly for several different reasons. You know, um, maybe you have a comparing a Lexus to a GMC Envoy or a Ford Explorer. You know, they're gonna have totally different weight profiles. You have four tires on your vehicle, and you know, some vehicles are heavier in the front. Some are heavier in the back. Some have a more even distribution, but they all have different weight distributions. And with different weight distributions comes a preferred pressure to keep your tire at. You know, for example, if you're like me, when I first started driving, you could have like an F-350 turbo diesel, a really heavy duty pickup truck, and the engine's all in the front, most of the weight's in the front because the cab and the drivetrain and everything's up there. And then you're really light in the bed of the truck because heck, there's no people, there's no nothing. It's just a big empty bed. Or you can have something like my vehicle. I have a Mazda CX-5 and you know, the, yeah, the engine's in the front and the drivetrain's up under, but you know, I've got all these extra seats back here and then I've got this cab above the seats and God forbid, you know, you stick a little bit too much in the trunk or in the, um, in the rear of the vehicle and it may have a totally different weight profile than a big heavy duty truck and there may be a lot more weight distribution in the back and not so much in the rear. So every vehicle has a different weight distribution and the vehicle manufacturers know that. This is no surprise to them. And with that being the case, they know about what PSI you should pump your tire up to. If you do it the old school way and just look at the max PSI of the tire, unlike my CX-5, my tires that go up to 44 or 50 PSI, you know, if I do something like that and put it on my vehicle, it could actually make the bottom of the tire, which the contact patch with the street, rather than being flat, it could actually be bowed up a little bit because your tires are overinflated. Or for example, if you say, oh, I like to drive on, with, I want to more worried about comfort, not worried about fuel efficiency. One thing you may do is put the tires at less pressure than recommended. And then when you're driving, you'll notice that rather than being like overinflated and bowed out where you wear the center of the tire out, which is what happens when you overinflate your tires, it'll be underinflated and then your wall of your tire, like I said, rather than being like this, will start to kind of flatten out. And your sidewall, you might get some wear on the sidewall of the tire because your tires are underinflated and they're, you know, they're too mushy. And rather than just having that flat contact patch like this, you know, your tires start to bow out like this and you get these weird wears on the, the wear patterns on the outside of the tread or potentially if you're going too low on the sidewall of the tire. So what you're gonna wanna do is follow the manufacturer recommendations and let me see if I can show you that real quick just so you know what you're looking at. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is the maximum pressure that you will see as stated from the tire manufacturer on the side of the tire. If you look on your vehicle, usually on the inside rim, not out here, on the inside rim, 
you're going to see something that says max load. And then, you know, it says 1,709 pounds. But under that, you're going to notice it says max pressure, 350 kilopascals. Now, I'm currently in America, and uh, maybe you are too. But in America, we use pounds per square inch. And when you look on the side of this tire, you're going to notice that it says 51 PSI. And that is what I historically used every single time when I was airing my tires up. You know, I would always use that and pump it up to the max pressure because I thought, uh, let's listen to the tire manufacturer. They should know tires. But actually what you're gonna wanna follow is this little bitty tag on the inside of your vehicle. And let me show you that real quick. So on the inside of your vehicle, you're gonna see on the, usually on the door well, something like this, outside of the seal, you're gonna see a couple of tags like this. Now, either of the tags, both of the tags have good information and you wanna read both of them. It'll tell you what your gross weight is and your total weight is. But one thing interesting is they are going to have the recommended tire pressure for your vehicles. Now. These are actually, like I said, different sizes. You're gonna notice like these are the size. The, the last number is the rim size and you have like ratios of the side wall to the tire to the contact patch and things like that. But this isn't super important. It's very important, but more for your tire manufacturer to do. But you notice over here, it says 35 PSI on there. This is what your vehicle manufacturer recommends and has calculated as the best for your vehicle so when you're airing up your tires you're really going to want to follow the inside of this door panel yeah so essentially this is what you're looking at this is what's going to be important and this is essentially what you're going to want to follow because they've done all the load distribution calculations and they understand if it's front heavy or rear heavy or how the weight is distributed from the left and the right and this is really what you're going to want to follow obviously you can go down just a little bit or you can go up just a little bit but you're going to want to keep it pretty close to that. You know, like I said, that maybe if you want a smoother ride, you can go down to 32. Mine recommends 35. Or maybe if you want a little bit better pressure or you're driving in cold climates, maybe you want to bump them up to 37 PSI. But you're going to want to stay about in that range because, like I said, they've done all the hard math for you guys and they know how this is going to sit and how it's going to ride best. Here's the vehicle I'm using, and you can tell that if this was a truck, you know, most of the weight distribution would be in the front because of the big engine and the cab's more forward, and then the rear is just big empty space with a big empty bed. But you can see my vehicle is pretty, pretty back heavy. It's a totally different weight profile from a truck, and you can see there's gonna be a lot of weight in this sucker, especially if you know you go get a bunch of groceries or have three people, six, seven hundred pounds of people in the back. And you're going to notice that this is a lot heavier on the back. So like I said, save yourself the stress. Don't try to do a bunch of weight distribution calculations and just listen to the vehicle manufacturer. And you should be okay. So that's, how, that's what pressure you want to have your tires at. It's going to be the most useful. And if you want to just follow what the manufacturer says directly, you'll probably be pretty safe. If you're wondering what PSI you should keep your tires at, try and follow the inside door panel. It's going to end up working the best for you. And you can always adjust it just a little bit up or down but don't follow what the tire says like i said i've bought vehicles like this and for example you know the max psi was 51 so that's what i'll pump it up to and as i showed you a little bit earlier if you're over pressured your tire is going to bulge in the center and you're going to get some funny wear patterns on the front of the tire i mean on the center line of the tire or for example if you under inflate them you know they're going to be a mushier tire and then the tire is going to spread out over and you're going to notice more wear on the outsides which you shouldn't and sometimes even on the sidewall which is very bad so like i said if you over inflate them you're going to see more wear here and that could and that's a problem as well you're definitely going to want to not pump it up to the max psi on the tire and follow what the vehicle recommends if you have any questions i'd love to answer them my name is jake marchand drop any comments below i answer my comments religiously and i i'm always putting out content whether that be vehicle related or tire related i also put a lot of real estate content and around the house content because i love to buy renovate and uh, rent out homes so if it's something you think you might enjoy give me a, a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll keep bringing you content and hopefully i can bring you some value thank you for your time i appreciate you watching and i'll talk to you shortly thank you